Tia, there wasn't much of an explanation about how he came to his decision not to run again. Was that what people were hoping to hear, do you think? I think not necessarily because people know why he decided not to run again. It's been talked about for weeks ever since his disastrous debate performance. People knew that there was this mounting pressure campaign from fellow Democrats, um, especially as the polling started to look worse and worse for President Biden. So I think people knew why, I think. But what they did want to hear is reassurance that he was at peace and reassurance that this was his decision that he made and that he wasn't forced out or, or some of the other narratives that I think some of his detractors tried to paint around his decision. And that is certainly uh, what he said this evening. Several times he talked about the importance of democracy, saying, history is in your hands. I revere this office, but I love this country more. How do you think that will play with voters? I think it's going to play well. I mean, I think that his decision has already played well. You hear people saying, you know, he's a patriot. He's someone who has been selfless. He's someone who will go down in history, not just as a consequential president, but as a president who, when it mattered, put what he thought was the best thing for the country above his own personal ambition. And so I think those are a lot of the themes that he reinforced, quite frankly, in this speech. Um, and he continued to talk about the fact that he made this decision because he thought it was what was best for the country. But then he also put it on the people viewing at home to say, now I need you to make a decision that I think is best for this country. And what was implied in that was to say, don't let former President Donald Trump come to the White House. Biden is now what's called a lame duck president. Uh, what did he signal about what he intends to do in the remainder of his time in office? He has many more months to go. Yeah, he actually outlined an ambitious um, kind of vision for his final months in office. Everything from voting reform to uh, further lowering the cost of prescription drugs to... Um, wanting to uh, impact some of the foreign conflicts that the U.S. is involved in, such as Russia's invasion of Ukraine, coming, helping to bring that to an end, Israel's war with Hamas, wanting to bring that to an end and freeing the hostages um, held by Hamas. Um, he talked a lot about what he would like to do. Now, so that this will be difficult, because he has to work with Congress to accomplish a lot of these things. Um, but other things might not um, be as difficult. For example, the cancer moonshot, which is something that he and First Lady Jill Biden have been working on. But that's something that could possibly get bipartisan support and, and quite frankly, could build on the goodwill that a lot of members of Congress who've known uh, Joe Biden for years, especially in the Senate, might want to give him something to build a legacy on. So he laid, he outlined a lot of things he would like to do. All right. And what's the thinking around what role he might play in Kamala Harris's campaign? He has said he's going to be working like hell to help get her elected. Yeah, I think, number one, it was important for him to pass the torch in a way that tells the people who supported him, the people who were disappointed that he bowed out, that it was, again, his decision to make, he stands behind it, but that he also stands fully behind Kamala Harris to make that seamless transition. And I think it'll be important for him to continue to do that. You know, there may be some donors and some longtime um, Democrats that want to hear from President Biden on that and on the issues of democracy. All right, Tia, I've got to stop there. Thanks so much. Good to get your input today. Thank you.